I'm going to say something and you tell me if this resonates with you. Uh, I'm a financial advisor. I've been advising individuals and families for more than 40 years. Uh, and while we help a lot of financial advisors and have for many, many years, um, uh, I tend to work best with what I call frustrated veterans. So what's a frustrated veteran? Well, <laughs> it's somebody who's successful in this business. No question. And they say things like this. They say, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very successful in the business, but I, you know, I thought by this point in my career, I'd be dot, dot, dot. And they fill in the blank with something that's dissatisfying to them. You know, I thought I'd be working fewer hours. I thought I'd be making a bigger difference for my clients or whatever, whatever. But the one I want to see if it resonates with you, if any of, if any of you feel the way I felt, okay? So at a certain point, I was really burned out in the business. And what I kept saying over and over was, you know, I love my clients. I just hate client acquisition. And what I meant by that was I loved the idea of serving clients and I loved what we were doing for them, but I did not enjoy the client acquisition part of the job. Does that resonate with you? So what did I do? All right. So I want to walk through this, what I did, because I am living proof that you can fix this. And that, um, even if you're like me, which is an introvert with call reluctance, you can still be a world-class producer. Uh, when I say producer, I'm talking just that's, that's industry lingo for acquiring clients and generating new revenue. So I prefer those two terms because why I hate client acquisition. And by that, what, what do I mean? I hate sales. I don't hate people. People, pe people often misunderstand. They think introverts hate people. No, introverts typically love people, but th there's aspects of interacting with people they don't know, meaning let's call them strangers, um, that that's uncomfortable or awkward or, you know, it, it, and the idea of coming in with a sales training or sales approach or closing techniques or appointment set setting techniques and all these things that the financial advisor, uh, the financial services industry was trying to train me to do. I don't know about you, but none of that worked for me. I was never going to do it. I'm an introvert. I have call reluctance. Uh, so how do I then acquire clients? Well, uh, in case you're wondering, I did come up with a way I'm going to kind of walk through it with you right now. I, not only acquired clients, I acquired clients faster than any other financial advisor, you know, at any firm that I worked at or in any coaching program that I was in. Okay. So, um, the method that I'm going to lay out for you that worked for me, uh, not only works, but it works so well. Um, you, you can build a multi-million dollar production business doing exactly what I'm talking about. So let me back up. I'm an introvert. I'm a call reluctance. I, I, I went through sales training and hated every minute of it, but I read a book. This is back in the 1980s when I was going through all of this emotion, uh, a book by Tony Alessandra called non-manipulative selling. And I fell in love with the concept and, and the basic gist of it is this, what we don't realize is that if we're good at what we do, if we have above average technical competence and we try at all to meet or exceed the client's expectations, in other words, the client service end matches up with the technical competence end, that the point of the book was that there are people out there already in the world who are seeking what you're, what you're providing. So, uh, so, so the question is, where are they and how do I let them know I'm here, <laughs> me and my above average technical competence and my commitment to exceed clients expectations is 
right here. I'm over here. So how do you do that? Well, I, if you're wondering how I ended up managing as an introvert, uh, having an unbroken record of being the number one top producer at my firm year to date for years, I mean, month after month, after year, after year, forever until my broker dealer sold to, you know, to a big major conglomerate. Uh, and I decided not to go with them. I just stayed independent. But the point is how did I, in that environment, how was I the number one financial advisor for client acquisition and revenue generation, uh, every year? Well, I stopped selling. So stop the idea of, uh, pushing anything onto a potential client. I don't go into any relationship with any new person with any ulterior motives. I'm not trying to schedule an initial meeting with them. I'm not trying to twist their arm to do anything. Uh, I just literally started making friends with everyone. I went uh, and it was actually in working with an older advisor at our firm that I managed to c come up with this brilliant breakthrough, but I was convinced as a young advisor by an older mentor that, you know, stop thinking of people like sales objects, <laughs> just be a nice person. Uh, just start making friends with everyone. And, and I used to push back and say, well, for one thing, all my friends are broke, recently graduated college graduates like me who will never be an ideal client for me. But I was trying to push back saying, look, I don't know many people that meet my profile for a client to which he said, forget about that. Just go out there, build a reputation that you're there to serve. You're a super nice guy and make sure they know what you do and what makes you better than what you do. Okay. And, and I just proceeded to do that. I went out and I made friends. Uh, he, he was telling me, look, everybody's a referral source. Even if they don't meet your profile to do business with you, everybody knows at least one person that does meet your client profile. So just forget about it. Just loosen up, make friends with everyone, add value to the relationship. When you meet with friends to catch up, try to figure out what's going on in their life and figure out ways to help them. And, um, just in between times when you meet with each other, just do nice things for them. Try to figure out how you can help them grow in stature. And I remember talking to my mentor saying, you know, the people that I want as clients are vice presidents and presidents of companies. How am I going to ever help them grow in stature? Well, because there are other areas of their life that are more important than money, their family. Are they a parent? Do they have kids? Do they have grandkids? These are things they care, tend to care about more than money. Uh, their fitness, you know, do, do they take care of their health and fitness? Are they interested in their health and fitness? Um, uh, you know, what are they passionate about? Is it their friends that they have in life? Is it their faith? Try to plug into what their life is all about. And in between times when you actually meet with them to catch up, just send them nice things to help them increase their stature in these other areas of life that they're trying to improve. So I did that. Uh, I think the key to this whole thing is figuring out how do you make sure everyone, you know, and I mean, literally everyone that you know, knows what you do and knows what makes you better at it. Okay. That was the thing that kept me up at night. So, yeah, I could become a servant leader. I could go out there and figure out what my friends' lives were all about. And I could go out and, you know, uh, I remember uh, a friend of mine, he was, uh, had his grandson was doing a science project. And, I, and I, I went back through my files and I found a science project that I did when I was in the eighth grade. And I just sent it to him. I said, here, maybe you could do this with your grandson. And he appreciated it so much. i took him up a notch or two in his stature as a grandpa. So I can do that. I can be a servant leader and do things like that with my friends. Uh, and 
you know, I was the one always initiating, Hey, let's go grab coffee and catch up. So I was the friend that always seemed to remember to call us back together to catch up. But then how on earth do, do I ever make sure they understand what I do and what makes me better than what I do? And I finally figured that out. And I'm, we have a lot of training on this and I'm happy to share it all with you if you want to come work with us. But I'll just say that I started telling stories. I started telling vignettes with every friend at some point for a minute or two. Uh, they would ask me, so what's going on in your life, uh, Mark? And I would say, well, I'm busy at work. Let me give you an example of something uh, that, that the type of clients I deal with. And then I would tell a tiny little story. I call it a vignette where a client came in with a big problem, significant financial issue. And because we're so good at what we do, we asked the right questions, got the client engaged, put a plan together, knocked out the problem. They lived happily ever after. So I tell these little two minute stories with a beginning, a middle and an end where the hero who is my client, not me, had this problem and together we sorted it out and they went on and lived happily ever after. So, uh, I, I, basically came up with a method to guarantee that everyone I know after they've heard me tell about four of these little vignettes, every friend of mine could explain me to someone else if they wanted to refer me. So if everybody's a referral source, the question is, have you properly trained everyone in your orbit? <laughs> what you do and what makes you better at what you do. So that's how an introvert becomes the number one top producer at a nationwide firm. I just made friends with everyone. I added value to the relationship. Uh, I, there was a guy in one of my training classes who said, Mark, you're such, you know, you're not selling these people. Do, do you remember Mark, what it used to be like when you were just a nice person? I mean, before you got into the financial services industry. So I laughed and I said, yeah, you mean just be a friend to people. So I, nailed that. And for me, it's just being a nice person, but being prepared prior to every time I sit down with anyone just to catch up to tell a little vignette. So once I've got all that nailed down, what are the pieces to pull all this together into a system that will acquire clients? Well, number one, you have to have ample people. So you need to gain the skill of getting the people, you know, to introduce you to the people that you don't know. All right. So that's number one. You have to have plenty of people that you can talk to or else you, you don't have enough people in your network to, to actually make a business out of, of, of client acquisition, the way I'm describing it. So you have to have ample people. That means being very skilled at getting people to introduce you to others. Number two, you have to have momentum. So for me, I always sat down and grabbed coffee to catch up with at least 10 friends per week. And, and the, the real goal was 20. So if, if you have a coffee in the morning and coffee in the afternoon, every day, Monday through Friday, five days a week, that's 10 people. Well, my goal was 20, but always have between 10 and 20 of these little meetings with friends just to catch up with no ulterior motive, just to develop the relationship with them. So you have ample people and you have what I'm calling momentum. You need to be meeting with at least 10 people a week to have ample momentum. Number three, you have to be able to have a plan to get your reputation out there to your potential ideal client community. So that's what I'm describing as having these little vignettes. And I make sure I come prepared to every meeting with every friend with a, with some sort of a vignette of a client that I have helped with a significant financial issue, go on to resolve the problem and live a wonderful life after that. So, uh, ample people, momentum, a reputation plan, and then never miss an opportunity. Once you've got the, all these three pieces in place, what you'll notice is after they've heard you tell your little vignette enough times of different stories of how you've helped clients, would you believe the biggest obstacle is that you'll miss the opportunities that many people give you to try to 
schedule a time to sit down and talk business with you. So you're talking with a friend and sometimes they say things just very oblique. That's actually a cry for help. Like, um, I'll tell a vignette about a couple that don't agree on financial issues. And at the, and the end, at the end of my little vignette, they, they, they got on the same page and now they coordinate You know, the two spouses, you know, are, are fully aware of what each other is trying to accomplish financially. And they are perfectly aligned when it comes to money. And then I'll, I'll ask a question. Have you ever known a couple that's doesn't see eye to eye on money? And I had a friend say, yeah, me. <laughs> oh yeah. My wife and I, we bicker about money all the time. And, and, and then they'll say, oh, uh, nice weather we're having. And they'll change the subject. Now the question is in the moment when somebody says something as vague as that, and they jat laugh about it, do you have the skill to stop the conversation, back it up and just see what they're doing? Say, so you mentioned you and your, your, your wife, uh, argue about money sometimes. Did I get that right? And they say, yeah. And, and I'll say, well, th that sounds like a significant financial issue. Is it? And, and let them talk. They, oh yeah. It ends up being a big issue sometimes. And then you say, well, you know, this is what we do. I'm happy to sit down and resolve that for you all. If that's something you'd like me to do. And so do you have the skill when somebody buzzes by you in a conversation with just dropping some little hint of a significant financial issue, do you have the skill to recognize it, stop the conversation and just check and see, is it, or is it not a, an opportunity where they're actually can't find the words to use, to ask you to help them in which case you can offer. And what have you done? You've not be betrayed the friendship. You're not, you didn't come into the meeting with any ulterior motive. They brought it up. You just backed up the conversation to clarify what they meant. And lo and behold, I ended up booking enough initial client interviews that I became number one in the company. And I, nobody beat me in that record. The question is, do you have the skill to deploy those four projects, ample people, momentum, reputation plan, so everybody knows what you do, and then you never miss an opportunity. If you can pull those four together, you'll, you'll, you'll achieve every financial goal you ever set for yourself uh, at, at any year. So whatever your goals are this year, uh, I encourage you to think it through and think about what I've said. If you want to work with us, we'd be happy to work with you, but you can take the, you can take the essence of what I just ran through and you can create a process that will allow you to not only meet, but it'll allow you to exceed all your financial objectives this year. All right. So I'm Mark Little. And we'll see you next time.